Welcome everyone. We will give others a few more minutes to join. Um, but while we wait, I'll answer some of the questions that were submitted during our registration. The first question that was submitted was asking how to include a markdown widget with a single number that is calculated, like a total value of sales or something like that. And so uh, this is pretty specific. Um, I created a little example. I'm going to post more information on the uh, community form for this question, um, just because it's with the markdown widget, it's a little more complicated. I opted not to use a summary table here because we want to have a text column and summary tables require that all um, columns in them are formula columns and we need this template column. The first step you wanna do is find the sum that you're looking for. So here um, I sum, let me jump back. This is the sales commission dashboard. It is a template. Um, we have this table of sales and that's what I wanna sum is this revenue column. And so in this total sales, I look up all the records in the sales table. Specifically, I'm looking up that revenue value. I'm summing that. And then I'm using an F string to convert the number to a string, and then I want the two decimals. And so that's returning a string value. Now with this markdown template, um, for more details on this, check out the markdown mag uh, widget magic webinar. Let me link that quick. Okay, so I've linked the webinar and that goes through how to use a template to create a nice markdown display. And here we're just pulling total sales so that the markdown display, which this formula is covered in that webinar. So then it's gonna display our number and then that's displaying here. And so I am talking with Dev to be able to show like the commas. So it shows us 122,000 comma 189. Um, so I'll have a little more detail in the community post, but that was just a quick overview of how you're trying to show um, like a total sales value in that markdown widget. Again, more info coming to the community forum on that. The second uh, was just a request. They wanna learn more about the reference list. So today, we are covering reference columns. Reference lists are the same overall. The big difference is that with a reference column, you can select one reference. We'll see that today. Uh, and with reference list, we will actually see multiple um, in there. But let me link to our reference columns article because that'll actually go into both references, which of course, you know, can be pretty critical for today. And then it'll talk on reference column or sorry, reference list columns as well. And if you do have some specific questions related to reference list, feel free to post in our community forum and we'll be able to answer all the questions there. And then we had one more question um, regarding forms. Uh, there was a lot of questions in the one, does it support multi-step forms? Um, it does not, with the form, you have to fill it kind of all at once because once they submit, it creates a record in our system. Um, you can create multiple sections in there, but not, not so much multiple steps or like multiple pages. Would be a cool idea though for the future. Can we add a QR code to our form? Yes, so I'm guessing you mean like you want a QR code on the screen that someone could scan. Um, and if that's the case, yes. In our webinar on forms, I showed how to add an image and you would just do the same steps, but with that QR code. Now, if you wanted to create a QR code that points to your form, you could do that as well. You would just use that URL and then 
find an online QR code generator and create it that way. Um, can we add tabs in our forms? No, it's just that single page. Again, you can create sections, but not like different tabs or different pages. Um, is it possible to validate input data to ensure accuracy and data integrity? No, because again, with forms, um, you're kind of creating the entire record all at once. And so someone's filling in the form data. It doesn't actually enter into your Chris document until you click submit. So there's no way to check on that. Can users upload files to forms? Not yet, but this is something we are working on. And can the form capture the exact location? I'm going to have to check with this. Our dev team might have some thoughts on that. So I'll find out and then I'll post in the community form with that answer. And then um, let me link to the forms webinar so you can view that. Let's see, share, there we go. And um, sorry, lost my train of thought. You can view that to learn how to put an image into the form. So if you wanted a QR code on the form itself, um, just follow the steps. I think I add like a picture of bricks or something to the form. Okay, so let's get started. So hello everyone and welcome to our June webinar. Last month, we explored a new feature in Grist, um, filtering reference dropdowns. You can find a recording of that webinar along with all of our previous webinars on our YouTube channel. So a recording of this webinar will be uploaded there within the next week. Um, so you'll be able to go back and reference that recording to review anything we covered today. So the webinar today will focus once again on references. Uh, one advantage that Grist has over traditional spreadsheets is that it can relate different tables of data to each other. So that's what we're gonna be exploring today. We're gonna be rebuilding the event speakers template, which is what we are looking at right now, to learn how to connect related data across tables. So in this template, we have a table of events and a table of speakers related to each event. Uh, let me share a link to the template for those interested. There we go. Okay, so as I mentioned, our event speakers template contains information on speakers booked for different events. So on this page, this is our speakers dashboard. We have event details here. And when you select an event, the list of speakers updates to show speakers specific to that event. Then beyond that, when you select a speaker, this card updates to show information related to that speaker. And this is built on two tables. So we have our events table here, which all the details for a specific event. And then we have our speakers table, which a single line is just all about the speaker. What event are they speaking at? What's the status? Are they confirmed? Have they been contacted? Their email, topic, bio, et cetera. So let's begin building this out. We're going to start in Google Sheets to see what this setup would look like in a traditional spreadsheet. So we can see it's quite simple. I have two sheets here. We have our events sheet, and then we have a speaker sheet. Nothing is connected. Um, there's no easy way to view all event details and speakers for that event in a single view. But as we saw in our template, we can't do that in Grist. So to start, We'll import these into Grist, and then we're going to explore relational data. So first, we'll import it in. We can just click this Add New button. And then if you're importing a document from Excel and that file is saved on your computer, you would just click Import Document, find it on your computer, and import it. Mine is located in Google Drive, um, so I'm just going to search for it on Google Drive instead of my computer. But the steps are otherwise the same. You click your file, you select it, and it's going to import it in for me. Okay, so we have our events table here. 
and our speakers table here. So they look the same as they did in Excel, uh, but now instead of the tabs across the bottom, we have pages on the left. So we have two questions submitted. The first question is going to get answered when I show you how we set up references, um, but I will speak to your exact situation at the end. I'll come back to it. And then for the second question, um, the second question is asking if each row has a unique ID and can we use it as an identifier? And yes, each row does have a unique ID and we can use it as an identifier. We'll show how to use it as an identifier when we set up our um, formula. But let me just show you. So if you want to reveal the ID for a record, equals key is to uh, start entering a formula. And then the formula is really simple. The dollar sign just notes a column. And then we just type in ID select it and that's your unique id each record will always have the same id let's say i move this uh, row it's still going to be id5 and so you can use that in um, formulas to identify a record and we'll see a bit of that with our references so to start when you're setting up your gris document you want to follow what we call the dry principle DRY stands for don't repeat yourself. According to the DRY principle, every piece of information should have one unambiguous authoritative representation within the system. So an example uh, with our speakers table, each speaker has a row entry in a table. Each row is a unique record. Event and event date here we see are repeated within the table. Like here's three times it's repeated one right after the other. <clears throat> this means that there is not one authoritative representation of an event here. But by maintaining a separate list of events, if any event detail changes, such as the date, we only have to change that in one location and then it'll update anywhere it is referenced. And that is because we create an authoritative record in the events table. So here in the events, each event is a single record. And so we wanna reference back to this as our authoritative record. So let's see this in action. Here we have the event column. Again, the events are repeated within the column. We want to have this point to our authoritative record in the events table. We can open the creator panel up here on the right hand side. That's a green vertical bar. And then under the column tab, we can change the column type. And this is where we set it to reference. Select reference and Grist will automatically guess that this data like re represents records from the events table identified by event. And so we can just click apply and it creates that link for us. Now, by converting this event column in the speakers table to a reference column, pointing to a single record in the events table, we go from having a lot of duplicated data to having a single source of truth, the events record in that events table. If we update an event's name, over here in the events table, we'll actually see it updated in the speakers table. So let me just update this one here. We change it to Cartoon Network Presents, E3, well, E cubed. And we see here in the speakers table, it updates as well. Now, when you have a reference column, you can type in the value while you're entering your data and it will populate with the best match. So it automatically highlights the OG intergalactic superheroes, but I can also double click and select from the list. It makes data entry a little bit quicker. You're not typing things incorrectly. Um, you can just select from the list.
Now I'm going to share that link to the reference article again. All of this information is in there. It's a great guide. Um, no need to remember everything I say today. Uh, it's all in our help center. Now, if you ever want to see the full details for the linked event, you can click on this link icon and it's going to open up the record card. And this is all of the information that is in the referenced table. So here we see it's the events card. So it's all the details for this record in the events card. You can also make changes from this page. So let's say I want to change E cubed back. I can make the change here in the record card. And when I close it, it is updated for all of the records. If I jump back to the events table, it is updated there as well. And so that's just a handy little feature. Uh, we have the record cards. I will share a link to that article um, because there's some details on how you can customize the layout of a record card. So now if you wanted to add any of those details directly to this table, you can do that using the existing rec uh, reference column to do that. So let's say, you know, we have this event date column. We want to pull it directly from the events table so that it updates should a date change. Um, then it'll update here in the speakers table. We can actually do this two different ways in Grist. So the first way you would select the reference column and then in the right hand creator panel under the column tab, scroll down and you see this add referenced columns section. Click add column and then you can add any column from that referenced table. We want to add event date. So it automatically creates that column, which will update if I change the date in the events table. So I'll just update it in the record card, change it to today. And you see that the formula column that we just added updates to show the updated date, whereas this text column did not update. That was just pulled in from our uh, Google Sheet document. So there's another way to do this as well from the add column menu. So you can open the add column menu a couple different ways. If you scroll all the way to the right, uh, at the end you would see this plus icon to add another column and you get the add column menu there. But you can also right click on a header or click this little arrow. It's all gonna open uh, the menu and then we wanna add a column and then we have the add column menu. So from here, we want to look up data from another table. The only other table here is events. And in the square brackets, it'll tell you how it's connected to that table. And here it's connected via the event column, which is our reference column. So it's just a little bit of extra info within the square brackets. Um, but the first bit here is the table name. Specifically, we want to add, we'll just use date again. So we just select date and it adds a column for us. So it's just two ways to pull data from that referenced table. Let me just delete these extra columns here. So both of these options are really just a shortcut to adding what we call a dot notation formula to pull data from the reference table. The event date column that we added contains the formula here, event.date. And this is just a dot notation formula that uses the reference column, event, to pull data from the date column of the referenced table. And we can follow this same format to pull other data from the events table. Again, you can still use the add column menu or the add reference column feature. This is just showing you if you feel like writing the formula, you can do that.
So we'll insert another column. This time we'll pull location. So you hit the equals key to start entering a formula. So first we need to tell it the reference column, which is event. And you'll see that as we start typing, it's gonna make suggestions and then dot. And then we tell it which uh, column to pull information from. And so we want location. And now it's pulling in that location from the other table. Again, if we open the record card, we can change this to a different location. And it will update in our table. So we have a couple questions that have come in. The first one is, what's the UUID? It's another unique identifier, um, but you would use that for like link keys. It's much harder to guess. So it's secure for like, um, link keys is really the best example um, because it's just such a long string of alphanumeric characters, difficult to guess. So when you use the UUID with link keys, um, it allows public access to specific bits of information in the document. And when you include the UUID, people can't guess that link and therefore have a harder time accessing that information, even though it's public. Um, so you can assign a UUID, but it's it not always needed. Um, and then there's ways to change the UUID once you assign it as the admin. Um, whereas the record ID in our system is assigned and does not change. And then the next question is how to book one speaker for several events. Um, in that case, you would use, you could use um, a reference list or what you could do is just um, include the speaker multiple times. There's a couple different ways that you would do that. Um, for today, we're keeping it more simple just to show off references. But if you wanted uh, a specific, bleh, specific example, if you could post to our community forum, let me share a link. Um, feel free to post there and I could create an example for you. So now that Grist understands the relationship, relationship between speakers and events, that data can be linked dynamically using widgets. So here in our template, we had a dashboard where we could select an event and then we'd see speakers for that specific event. So let's build this out. We're gonna start by adding the events table so I'm going to add a new page for our dashboard. We want a table widget for events. And then next we want to add speaker information. So we'll add a new widget to the page. Again, we'll add a table, but this time we're adding the speakers table. Now we get the option to select by. And we can select by events. That is because we have a reference column in the speakers table that points to the events table. So it's creating this link, allowing us to link our widgets. Okay, so now when I select an event, our speakers table updates to only show speakers for the selected event. I'll make this full page so it's a little bit larger. Now, because we already have the event details up here in this table, those are easy things that we can just hide from our speaker, speakers table. I can right click and hide the column and also select by dragging and dropping across multiple columns and hiding them. And even once they're hidden, that linking still works. Now to clean up our view a little bit further, we can pull out some of the speaker details down here into a card view. 
If you've seen our webinars, you've seen us many times. We're going to add a widget to the page, select card, and now we're going to select speakers. Now here we have lots of options. Um, again, because the speakers table contains a reference column pointing to events, we could select by events. Or what we want is to select by speakers. So when we select a speaker in the speakers table, we want the card to show that specific selections information. And so that's what we want here. And we will add to page. And so this is what we call same record linking because what we see here with Big Bad Wolf, it's the same information here. It's just in another view. Now with cards, you can also um, edit them just under this card uh, tab of the creator panel. Click edit card layout. You can hide fields. You can drag and drop. And if you want to add something back that you've hidden, just click add field and you'll find it. Just be sure to save your layout. And now that it's all here in the card, we can hide it from this table. Another way to quickly hide some columns is from the table tab of the creator panel. Here you can see all of your visible columns. You can just select the ones that you want to hide. And so that simplifies our table view quite a bit. So we can see who is speaking for an event, what their status is, and then we have the card if we want to see more information about them. Okay, so finally, to end our webinar, let me show this to you in our <laughs> template first. We actually have a reverse lookup formula here in the template in the not booked column. And so that's what we're going to walk through to end our day today. So here in the not booked column, it turns red if we don't have all of the speaking slots full. And so that's what we're about to build out. Okay, so here I'll just kind of talk through the formula as a whole and then we'll walk, walk through building it. So first, we look up records in the speakers table down here. We would look up all the records that fit our criteria. The first criteria is that event equals ID. Before we jump into building the formula, I'll explain ID a bit more. I know that was one of the questions at the beginning. It was about that unique record ID and how to use it as an identifier. We're using it here. And then we also want to match, specifically, we're looking for the records where the status is confirmed. Len counts the number of items in a list. And then we compare the two. Basically, we compare how many speakers are confirmed for an event to the number of speaking slots. And if they're not equal, then this turns red. So we'll talk through it. We'll do it piece by piece. It'll help it make a little more sense. Um, and we'll do it a few times. Let's see. OK. So again, to start, click the equals key to start entering a formula. And then we begin with our lookup records function. So first we need to tell it where we want to look up our information, like what table. And we're going to be looking up records in the speakers table. We want to know how many speakers for this event have been confirmed. So we start typing speakers and it already starts giving us suggestions. We specifically want to look up multiple records, and so look up records. And then we want to find, tell it what we're going to match on. So we want to know how many speakers for this event in this row. And that's where we select event equals ID. Now, why do we use ID here? 
over here in our speakers table, let me pull this back. Oops. We have this event column. This is our reference column. Now reference columns will display whatever we want it to display from the other table. Here it's displaying the event name. But what it really stores is the row ID. So um, that question at the beginning was, does each row have a unique identifier? It does. And that's what we pulled up here is that unique identifier. And that is what's stored in the reference column. Events that lists the table that the record lives in. And then three is that unique record ID. So the event meet a met is unique ID three in the events table. And so that is what is stored in the reference column. Here with the show column, that's just giving it a label. And so we want to give it the label event because it just looks nicer. No one needs to look at the uh, unique ID. This is much more useful to us. But knowing that that's what it stores is important when writing these formulas. Because in this event column, it's not storing meet a met, it's storing events three. And we need it to match the ID in this table, which is, uh, oh, here we go, three. <laughs> events three. It's, kind of, it's a difficult concept to kind of wrap your head around. Um, the key bit is to know, yes, there is a unique identifier. Uh, when you're using references, just use ID. Um, the, the biggest thing when you're writing these formulas, let me jump back a little bit. If you select like up records, it's going to suggest that to you to start. And so you can just rely on these suggestions to write your functions. Okay. So we're gonna match on event because we wanna find all speakers for the selected event. But on top of that, we want to find the speakers where the status is confirmed. So we can add that to our match criteria. Now look up records returns a list of records. And this is what the list of records looks like. It shows you the table name and then the record ID for those records speaking for this event that are confirmed. Now we want to know how many speakers for the event are confirmed and that's where we use when. And so now it's counting that for us. We know how many, basically it's the same as the slots filled. How many speakers are confirmed for my event? Next, we want to compare that number to the number of speaking slots. So you can click into a column to insert it into your formula so you don't have to type it. And the double equal sign means equals in Python. And so now we're comparing asking, is the speaking slots value equal to the number of records in the speakers table for this event that are confirmed? And we're going to get true or false values. Typically, when you're working with true or false, um, it's easier to view these as a toggle. We have the option to do a checkbox or a switch. We're going to leave it with a switch. Now, we want to know specifically when those speaking slots and slots fill, when those numbers are not equal. And that is the easiest part of this formula. We just put not, not speaking slots equal to this uh, other function. And then we get a better alert when we don't have enough speakers for an event. Now, if you wanna change the little toggle color, it's here under cell style. Just change the text color and it'll make it red. So let's walk through that uh, one more time. I know we had a little bit of a diversion, so we could talk about ID. So this time we'll we'll just walk straight through it to help understand uh, basically the format of the function. 
Okay, so you hit equals to begin entering your formula. First step is that lookup records function. You tell it what table you want to look up information from. And that is the speakers table. We want lookup records because we're looking up however many records of the matches that we get. Because we want we want to know how many speakers, which is multiple, hopefully. And then we needed to give it our match criteria. We want it for this event and event in the speakers table is a reference column. So we do event equals ID, but then we also want where the status is confirmed. And so we can add that second criteria here and confirmed is a string. So it's in the quotes. And oops. that gives us a list of records. We want to count the number of records in the list. And so we use len. That gives us the count. We want to compare the number of confirmed speakers to the number of speaking slots. So we're seeing if those two are equal. If they're equal, it'll return true. If they're not equal, though, it'll return false. I'm just gonna change that column type again. And then remember, we specifically wanna know if they're not equal. Um, right now we're comparing equality and if they're equal, it returns true. Well, now we want it to return true if they're not equal. And then we get the not booked function. So that is our lookup records function. Again, it's pretty complicated. When I go through these in our webinars, it's more so that you have a reference to come back to um, step by step. You don't have to memorize how to do them all the time. Um, but definitely use the formula. I don't know what to call it. The filler where you start typing and it makes suggestions, definitely use that to your advantage. Okay, so that is our webinar. Um, I'm gonna share a link again. This one is to our references and lookups article. It goes into our lookup records functions, our dot notation functions, specifically around references and reference lists. Definitely take a look when you get a chance. And then with that, I'll open it up to questions. Jeff, I know you had a question from the beginning, uh, so I will answer that one first. The question is, I have a table entitled projects, here we go, with a field titled deal team members. Then another table with partners um, with a field deal teams. Many partners can be on a deal team, so that would be a reference list because we want to be able to select multiple. We want to be able to add a partner to the project deal team from the project page and vice versa. Okay. So you would just set it up as a reference list to start. You would only be able to do this one way for now. We do have something coming in the next month or so. Uh, where you would be able to do this both ways. But for now, you would only be able to select DLT members in one spot, the projects table. But then you could use a formula column over here to see what deal teams each person is on. So this was just a lookup records function. As I was typing, it gave me suggestions. Let me just add another column to show that. So I know that I'm looking up information from the projects table. Here it already tells me, it's like, oh, you probably wanna look up where this person's name shows up in deal team members, which yeah, that's exactly what I want. So we can click that. Then what I did was just change this to a reference list column showing B, which was the project name. And so that's what I did there. It only allows you to do it the one way but you are able to see the information 
in the other table. Again, coming soon uh, that you would be able to do this in both tables and it would update in the other, but that's not here yet. Um, give us a little bit longer and then that'll be possible. So I hope that temporarily answers your question, Jeff. Um, but better things coming soon. The next question, if I have an event table, a donation table, which is linked to event and a person table linked to donation, how would I do a dashboard where the event is clicked showing a widget of donations, which if a person is clicked would show the person table with the total of donations for the event. I'm going to hide the person table from our view. Um, we just have some people set up and we have some events. Okay. So we have events and people are making donations at these events. So they can make this a donation twice to the same event. Okay, we're just gonna do one event just because I think it'll, it'll show what we need. Okay, first we wanna link our widgets where we just see donations for the selected event. I'm gonna leave this total donation table over here to the side just so we can see it all. But we can add another widget to the page. We'll add donation. We wanna select by the event table. So when I select an event, we see the donation specific to that event, which for A is all of them. B is none, C is none right now. Okay, so that shows the first step, which is all the donations for the event. Um, and then we want person table with a total of donations. Okay, so now we want a total of donations for each person because here we see Natalie and Anais donated two times at the same event. We'd rather see a total versus multiple records. Okay, so with that, we would need to add a summary table. Now we want to summarize the donation table by, oops, not event, what did I say, donation. Click the green summation icon to create a summary table. And we are going to group by event and person. And now we can select by event. And we're gonna add it to the page. And so now that creates that summary you want. So I can click an event and see a summary. So here we see Anna East donated twice in event A with a total of $500. Natalie, twice, total of $500. Dimitri, once, total of $200 for the selected event. Now, if we had stuff for B and C, it would do the same thing. So that's all it takes. Obviously setting up that for a little bit, but yeah, really simple. Just make sure when you create the summary table, to group by that selector table. So in this case, we wanted to group by event so that we can select by event. Now with the summary table here, you obviously cannot enter data. And so you'd still want somewhere to enter data within the dashboard probably. And so you could collapse this. So here we've got that donation table uh, selected by the event. That's handy to have here because I can go and add Dimitri, I can add his next donation amount, and now it's gonna keep this summary updated. Uh, but you can collapse this so it's out of the way. Uh, click the three dot icon, collapse widget, it puts it up into the top. Okay, so you need a um, sum for the event as well. If you need a summary for the whole entire event, you could add another widget to the page click the donation summation icon, summarize by event, select by event and add to page. And there you go. Now, if I show B, it would show nothing because I have no uh, donations yet, but you can also build this into the standard event table if you wanted. Um, so we can use a formula to do a similar thing here. We wanna use a lookup records function so we want to look up records in the donations table. Uh, again, we're going to do event equals ID again, because of that uh, reference column. And then we want 
what value do we want from that table? We want amount. And then finally, we want to sum all of those records. And we just convert that to a numeric column so that we can have it formatted correctly. And then you could quickly see the donation here. There you go. Some good examples to show off there. Awesome. And if you guys have further questions, um, especially with like use cases like this where it's pretty specific, feel free to post in our community forum and we can get you an answer, give you an example, just like we did here. Question is, do you and the devs follow the community posts? We do. Everybody um, on the GRIST team can see the community posts. And so we can get back to you pretty quick in there, especially because some members of our team, well, we're pretty global as a team, so you can get answers quicker than, let's say, like emailing support. Because if you're emailing support, it's me, and I am located in central time in the United States. So if you're in a very different time zone, we're probably going to take a while to get back to each other. Um, whereas the community forum, you will might get an answer from me, you might get an answer from one of our team members in Poland, etc. We're a little more available through that route. Is it possible to have a relation one to one? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, if you're creating references and it's just a one to one, you would just use the reference once. There's nothing in Chris to keep you from using a reference a second time, but there is something in the works. So keep an eye out for our newsletters. And then you'll be able to, uh, basically say if it's a unique one, and then you won't be able to use that same reference a second time. But not yet here, coming soon. Excellent. Well, that's it. It was so great to see you all again. Uh, thanks for joining, and we will see you next month. Bye, everyone.